all YouTubers were struck or struck and I don't know and they, we were not able to upload videos and um, this showed that one of the most important USPs of Bitcoin is censorship resistance. Hey guys, don't forget to check out our community app. It's the first not-for-profit app where you can predict, learn and earn Bitcoin with zero risk. Test it out, especially if you're afraid of investing money, your own money, this is the perfect portal. Dear crypto community of blockchain blaze across the globe, welcome back to Kryptonite special edition Davos. And we're here at the Tech Park 2020 Summit with tons of really cool people. And speaking of really cool people, I have a really, really, really cool person with me. Chris MM Crypto, so happy to have you, buddy. So we're just talking a little bit about your story, which is really interesting. You had the opportunity to go into investment banking, very safe, very cozy, probably a nice income. Safe. Safe. That's it. Ah, so please let's take off. There that. you go. Yeah. Yeah. I, was, I was studying <laughs> economics and I was really interested in the first place to, to start with investment banking and all this kind of stuff. But um, you said safe. Yeah, that's what the people are taught. In the end of the day, you are working like 100 hours a week and um, if this space is about to get disrupted, it is not safe because um, if this space just goes vanished, then you have no employer anymore and you have no job. So um, in and it of itself, it's not really safe. I realized that I realized that this banking as we have it right now, ever since the gold standard was removed, is not um, is not going to last forever. It has eventually to crash one day. So um, I found out about Bitcoin and crypto and just found out this is for eternity and that's why I just swapped over to crypto. I'm so glad you did because you've inspired many through your channel and a great, great influence. In terms of Bitcoin itself, like a really high level, simple question, like for people out there, can you remind us why Bitcoin and why cryptocurrency is so important as of today? As the, the first thing which really reminded us on that was the YouTube purge. You heard about it, like yeah. YouTube just is able to, to delete all the channels and we cannot upload content anymore, cannot communicate with the audience. You have a YouTube channel yourself. And me with the MM Crypto team, we were just feeling so bad about that. And it shows that Bitcoin is not only decentralized, not only peer-to-peer, -peer, it's also censorship resistant. You can send whenever you want money from A to B. Um, you can set, store data on it, like you have nice secondary solutions and no one can prevent you from doing all of that and taking advantage from all of that. And um, YouTube is centralized, banking is centralized. And I mean, central banking, it's, the word already, already gives it away. So um, I think crypto and, 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 and Bitcoin especially is, is really here to stay and to disrupt all different kinds of industries. I'm so happy to hear that. And you talked about decentralization. As of today, and especially 2019, 2020, DeFi is a massive topic these days. Uh, are you more focusing on Bitcoin or do you see other opportunities coming in the way? How do you see the evolution? Um, we are mainly focusing on Bitcoin. However, Ethereum, if, we, if someone points a gun to our head, we have to say Ethereum is the second most legit project out there. It is very interesting. And as you can see, it's like exponentially growing. We talked about it today with Ivan on tech, and he actually mentioned that right now we are already at more than 300 million US dollar locked up in, um, in, in DeFi. And this is actually a lot. If you think about that, it started from zero and with exponential growth, we will hit a billion dollar worth of um, money stored in DeFi very soon than 10 million, billion, eventually maybe even 100 billion or more. And that will probably yeah, be one of the next drivers in the next bull run, um, DeFi. It's gonna be Bitcoin, it's maybe gonna be the financial crisis and probably also DeFi. Are you worried about the financial crisis? This is a topic that obviously it hits your, your generation, our generation, right? Yeah, yeah. In 2007, 2009. But what about the, the current outlook of the economy? What's your, your feeling? I'm worried about so many people losing their jobs. Um, I'm worried about so many people losing um, the pur purchasing power. So that's what I'm worried about. I'm not worried about myself or about the team members of MM Crypto because we are prepared. And we see Bitcoin as a long-term safe haven asset for, for being prepared for the financial crisis. So whenever this hits, um, because the central banks are printing money like crazy, you can see it at the balance sheet, it's going up. They are printing the money, then 
they are buying bonds on the secondary market and that's the way how they are bonds and stocks how they pump money into the system and that leads eventually to inflation not only from the money supply but also it decreases your purchasing power and whenever this financial crisis bursts whoever whatever it might be it might be a debt crisis a currency crisis or a combination of both then people might go into yeah they, they might sell and panic sell their stocks and stuff go into us dollar but eventually go into safe haven assets like gold silver Bitcoin, Bitcoin and um, that's what we are probably about to see. Some people say, um, is it really going to be Bitcoin? We saw a lot of high correlation between stocks and Bitcoin and that would actually go against the argument of Bitcoin being a safe haven asset. However, in the last few weeks, we were able to see with the Iran crisis. Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, I mean, it, it escalated and you saw gold spiking up, silver spiking up, the number one war indicator Lockheed Martin sp is spiking up, oil is spiking up, but Bitcoin also went to the upside. And on the flip side, when Trump made his de-escalation speech and this um, whole global uncertainty about is there going to be a war went down again, gold went down, silver went down, but also Bitcoin went down. And that could be one of the first indications that Bitcoin is not only from retail, but also from institutions going to be treated as a safe haven asset hopefully also in the financial crisis. That's really interesting. And do you remember also Jin Tao, like the president of China, there was some uh, effect on Bitcoin as well. Do you remember the announcement when he's talking about blockchain, yeah. not crypto? Yeah, crazy. I mean, wow, he just mentioned it and like <laughs> we had such a big pump, which was artificially. I mean, we just yeah. dumped that back down, but still we can see like exogenous uh, things are impacting the price heavily. And um, yeah, that was one thing. Many people say there's technical fundamental analysis and China analysis <laughs> we are doing on our channel, all of them. So we talked about China, we are doing a lot of TA and also fundamental on-chain analysis, yeah. That's fantastic. So is it safe to say that you believe that Bitcoin is an uncorrelated asymmetric risk return asset class as of now, as many people like to call it? Mm, as of now, maybe not, because we can see, actually we can see some correlation um, between stocks and um, and Bitcoin. We saw some That's dumps true. in stocks and then also Bitcoin dumped. We saw some days where stock pumped heavily and then Bitcoin d did the same. But in the long run, I think Bitcoin is created as um, as something which should 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 be a safe haven asset. I mean, just look at when Bitcoin came out, 2009, just right after the financial crisis, which was um, which was built from um, from asset-backed securities from too high people being being in mortgages like buying buying real estate like crazy um propped up debt so i think bitcoin is here to exactly um yeah prevent people from from being a victim of of this yeah immoral financial system as we can see it right now beautifully yeah. put chris but you're right like currently I, I i remember tom lee on cnbc saying that bitcoin had some sort of positive correlation with the s p 500 yeah and then it was emerging stocks like the year before but it tends to change a lot right it's very complicated it yeah exactly this this correlation is weakening right now and um i am very confident that in the long run once we see the stock markets plummet and they have to eventually plummet because they are overvalued in our opinion. Once that happens, um, we are actually confident that at least in the mid run, Bitcoin will be actually um, inversely correlated. So we will see negative correlation with stocks. That's what we hope for. And that's actually what Bitcoin is designed for. It's designed for definitely. Yeah. And you're talking about how stocks and, and just general financial markets are in a bubble or are overvalued. And could you tell us a little bit more about why you see that? Yeah, I mean, they talk about Bitcoin being overvalued because they don't understand the fundamentals. They only see the, the percentage gain. But if you if you compare the size of the Bitcoin market with gold, um, which is 30, 90 times higher, um, or with the stock market, with the monetary base, then you can see that Bitcoin is such a tiny space um, compared to everything else. And then you can talk about overvaluation again coming to the um, overpricing or overvaluation, it's easy. I mean, you can see, I talked about it before, the central banks print money on a daily basis like, like crazy. They pump it into the system uh, through the secondary market. And when everything is measured in US dollar and US dollars, um, the US dollar supply goes up, whereas Bitcoin stays the same, whereas um, yeah, like gold, watches, real estate, um, paintings, they 
tend to rise in price because they are not as inflationary as the underlying asset where it is denominated in. And uh, that's, the, that's the reason for the overvaluation, for the price over, overpricing. However, for Bitcoin, this is um, a different thing because we have fundamentals actually backing up that, in our opinion, the, the overall market cap should be much higher, much higher. Maybe not right now, but as the we, we also need demand adoption and stuff. But as time passes, um, eventually it will we will see a huge X for Bitcoin and um, yeah maybe for Ethereum and some very selective altcoins. Fantastic, beautifully put. It, you've been doing so much amazing TA on YouTube and, and giving lots of you know on chain data as well. Like as of today, like what are some of the your favorite data sets or technical indicators that you love to use that really mm -hmm. share the message to you? I mean, for, for everyone coming new into the space and trying to understand the value of Bitcoin, the best long-term mod price model is maybe the stock-to-flow model where you measure the scarcity of Bitcoin and you try to derive the, the long-term price development of Bitcoin from the scarcity. Since scarcity is, in fact, the biggest unique selling proposition of Bitcoin, you have a unlimited you have a limited cap at 21 million bitcoin you cannot inflate it more than 21 million because this cap is hard coded in the bitcoin blockchain and um, so scarcity is the biggest one and this stock to flow model actually measures how every four years when the inflation gets cut in half with the halving events the scarcity increases and this scarcity actually pulls the price like a magnet co-integrated to the upside so we can always see with the halving bitcoin is undervalued towards the scarcity then the price goes up we can see a huge bubble and overvaluation and then we eventually go down again and with the next halving it goes up so that's actually a very nice model then for the shorter term there are so many things we can talk about so much we have the realized price which measures whenever people are trading in a profit or a loss it measures fear and greed so whenever the price is way below the realized price everyone can check it out at charts.wubull.com um, then we have a lot of greed in the market. People are shaken out and that's the time to buy. Whenever the price is overextended and higher than the realized price, then people are overly trading in a profit or holding in a profit. There's a lot of greed in the market and that's the time to sell. So there are a lot of different um, things you can actually pull from the Bitcoin blockchain to, to try to outperform the market. It's amazing. That's really interesting. I actually seen the fear and greed indicators, right? There, yeah. there are multiple like indicators on some websites that are really interesting, right? On exactly. I mean, the, the fear and greed indicator that most people are looking at is actually taking like number of tweets and all this stuff. Like this is, it's an interesting thing to look at. But the most interesting thing is if you take on-chain data and that's coming from the Bitcoin blockchain, it's um, taking data points like when is Bitcoin moved, at what price, price, how many Bitcoin are moved. And from that, you can der derive fundamental data. And that's extremely interesting. You have never seen anything like that. You have everything, uh, all the time, you have stocks traded on exchanges and stuff. That's like centralized stuff. But taking data from the Bitcoin blockchain, it's as rare and as real as it can get. And um, Bitcoin is the first asset which makes that possible, making on-chain fundamental analysis. And this is way more powerful as anyone can think about it right now. It will be a very big topic, topic in a year or two or three. That's really interesting because a lot of people say it's all about TA and price action, but you actually have multiple analysis, like yes. you're, even the China analysis. So you mentioned yeah, exactly. Earlier. <laughs> I mean, that's about it. If you are, if you have a tunnel view and you are only looking at one or two indicators, people are making jokes that we are the indicator guys. But however, they are watching and liking our videos because it is very important to combine on-chain fundamental indicators, TA, um, news. China analysis, all of that together. And then if you combine all of that together, then you have a real chance of finding your path to the truth. If you have a tunnel view and you only do like specific TA, you are only there for like only Fibonacci or whatever. You don't look at news. You don't look at adoption um, fundamentals then you will probably miss out on a big part of the truth. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. The best of both worlds. Yeah, exactly. There's one thing I wanted to ask you, like everyone is really excited about the having or having, mm -hmm. depending on which article you look at. But there's also like a theory called the self-fulfilling or self-defeating prophecy, which says that when too many people of, are aware of the same news or future news or future events, it will alter 
the yeah. actual expected outcomes. Yes. So are you a little bit worried about that? About you know the or do you still believe the happening is is going or the having is going to moon as we say? I'm, or? I'm I'm not worried at all because in the long run you actually have a linear regression line going through it. And however we can get we can get front run, yeah, and the price just dumps before the halving. We get or or maybe it's coming afterwards. I mean. Usually, we already know that the halvings will end in, 2100, in the year 2130. So in a perfect efficient market, that should already be priced in, right? And it is not. So in the long run, the price of Bitcoin will just follow its fundamentals. And what's happening now, if we are going to pump tomorrow, next month, after the halving, before the halving, if you are here for the long run, if you are here for the fundamentals and what Bitcoin is actually meant for, then all of this stuff doesn't matter. So if someone wants to take any advice, maybe dollar cost averaging is better than trying to outperform the market in that way. Beautifully yeah. said, beautifully said. And obviously, you, one last thing, you're a guy in crypto, you love Bitcoin as a store of value, it's a medium of exchange. Do you see Bitcoin becoming a unit of, unit of account eventually someday further down the road? Or, or how I do mean, you see this? We are convinced that this is going to be because we say, Cash is trash, Bitcoin is money, and um, uh. <laughs> Bitcoin has to have the unit of account thing. But right now, we, we have things like the Lightning Network, the second layer solution for nearly, for Lightning Fast and nearly um, free instant transactions. That has to be developed, that has to be taken into the mainstream. That may take another five years, another 10 years, but whenever we have these instant Lightning Fast transactions, um, with settlement tra transactions on the most secure blockchain in the world, then um, probably we will have also the unit of account, medium of exchange and store of value, and then Bitcoin will be truly money also in the mainstream. That's so beautifully put. There's actually a guy here earlier who's talking about, don't ask me like how much I pay my employees in euros, ask me how many sats they receive. It's already a unit of account for us. It's just Great a guy. belief. Yeah. <laughs> Show it to me. Yeah. I'll introduce cool, you to cool. him later. <laughs> Chris, it is a pleasure to have you, and I hope we can shoot again and again and again. You've been uh, an amazing influencer in this space and educating people, and, and I really appreciate the time. Thanks for having me, man. Big shout out to the MM Crypto team also. Um, big shout out to you, man. You make high quality production. It was a big honor to be here at the World Economic Forum in your show, talking to all these great followers of yours. So we will be happy to welcome you on our channel as well. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So if the Kryptonites guys, you know, want to follow you, obviously you have the YouTube channel, right? MM Crypto. Yes. Uh, on Twitter, like, are you active on Twitter At these MM days? MM Crypto also, yes. So on Twitter, YouTube, I think that's the best way to follow us. Thank you so much, buddy. You've been a real uh, genius. It was awesome. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment below. This gentleman is very, very busy, but he'll, I'll try to get him to answer some of your questions if possible. In the meantime, sure. don't forget to tune in next week, 8 o'clock GMT, premiering at a PC near you. Thank you so much, guys, and see you next week. Bye-bye.